And as Amanda was sharing this morning, you know, when Jesus came on the scene, he tore the veil. We were separated. We had to go through a priest when we want to go to God. But God has made all of us priests. We can go directly to God Amen. through Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning, I'd like to read for you throne room. Revelations 4, 18, 11. Each of the four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes all around, even under his wings, day and night. They never stopped saying, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him, who sits on the throne forever and ever, the twenty-four elders, they fall down before him who sits on the throne and they worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne and they say, You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things and by your will they were created and have their being. There is no greater name than the name of Jesus. There is no other name as worthy to receive all of our worship and all that we are. Because his great love for us, Jesus willingly laid down his life to cover all of our sins and to make a way for us to freely enter into the presence of God. We can boldly come to the Father and have relationship with Him because of the beautiful gift that Jesus gave us. So why would we ever turn to anything else? When it gets tough, why would we try to take it on alone, just as Amanda said? Run into the presence of God. Turn your heart to Him when difficulties arise. Take time in your day to acknowledge the reality that Christ is in you, the hope of glory. Amen. Train your heart and your mind, not just to come to him when seasons are challenging, but bring your love and bring your devotion every day to the one who is so worthy to be praised and to be given all the glory. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Amen. Thank you, Anna, for reading that for us. And this time we just want to sing out this wonderful hymn, Wonderful Words of Life. And it talks about the Word of God, which gives us hope, which gives us strength, and it gives us life. Number 181 in your hymnals. If you have a hymnal, you can say name.
pleasant good morning to everyone. This morning the name of my song is uh, Seal Victory. The darkness falls upon me. 
crucify Christ you are more than conquerors once you leave everything in God's hand you will see God's hand in everything and this time let us all stand we just want to sing out a couple choruses and give God all the praise for the Lord is my tongue when he gives me the power to tear down the works of the enemy
want to sing our this final song before we turn over to our pastor. More love, more power. We want more of God in our lives.
uh, for this memorial service. And it's right in Governor Road, just at that uh, sharp corner there. As you're coming in, the road just before on your right hand side. And so everyone is invited to come over, all right, and to support the family in this memorial service. So there is a, a policeman and he is driving past a uh, roadside uh, upper stand when he notices a sign. And so the sign says, Apple seeds guaranteed to make you smarter. And so it's $20 per seed per apple seed. So he pulls over and informs the vendor that it is fraud. False advertising to make an absurd claim like this apple seed guaranteed to make you smarter. And then the cost is so ridiculous, $20 per apple seed. The vendor said, no, 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 he tells the copper. He says, my apples, you see, special variety. In fact, it is a scientific miracle. Buy just one seed and eat it, and you would notice immediately an increase in your intelligence. If not, I promise a refund. I will refund you back your $20. Well, the cop says, well, all right, but if it does not work, I am shutting your operation down. And so the cop takes on a $20 bill and he hands it over to the vendor and the vendor gives him a seed. And so he chews up that seed and he's waiting for it to kick in for sudden intelligence. But after a few moments, the cop says, you know, even if you are not lying, I could have brought a few apples and had seeds to last me months. And the vendor says, ah, yes, you see it working already. <laughs> well, I don't know much about them apple seeds, uh, but I can tell you about this seed that I have in my hand, praise God. I can tell you about so many seeds in the kingdom of God. I can tell you about offering, and I can tell you about tithing. And I can tell you what God says in His Word, amen. That when we bring the tithe into the stalls, God will multiply over and over and over again. Amen. I could tell you about that. I could give you many testimonies over the years of a proven God to be faithful and true to His Word. And I want to encourage you to walk in obedience. Amen. And have God's blessing upon your life and upon your family. Let the curses be removed this morning. The curses of poverty. Amen. God says, you want to make us that head and not the tail. You want to bless us in our coming in and in our going out. Amen. Whatever you're going to you put your hands to do is going to prosper. Amen. That is connected to our walk of faith in obeying what the, the Lord has said. If you are not a tither, I encourage you to become one. I've been practicing this for years and years and years and years. And I know, amen, that it has resulted in God's goodness upon my life and upon my family. Let's all stand, amen. Would you hold that tithe and offering in your hand today? Heavenly Father, we are delighted that we can continue in our worship. And what a worshiping uh, experience it has been thus far. We have been drawn into the throne room of God. We have been joined with the angels and the epic saints all over the world as we worship the one true and living God. The only true God that there is, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We thank you, dear Lord, for the opportunity now that we can bring it into the house of the Lord, our tithes and our offering. Thank you, the Lord, for fulfilling your word and blessing your people richly in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Well, we bring sacrifice of praise into the house of the
experience, Lord. I can't wait to, to take my flight to glory. Amen, somebody? To be called up when the rapture takes place. Uh, be strong, brethren. Be strong no matter what trials that you might be going through today. Don't lose heart and don't lose faith. Uh, our redemption drawing nigh. Glory to God. It would belong, brother. It would belong, sister. Amen. We invite our Sunday schoolers uh, to uh, leave uh, the auditorium of uh, this time and you can go for your Sunday school class. Amen. And God bless you. Have a good one as always. Amen. If you're here for the first time at uh, Power Time Ministries, I say to you, welcome, my friend. In the name of Jesus, it's a joy having you with us this morning in our worship service. While the Sunday schoolers are exiting, glory to God, now we are turning now to the reading of the text for today's message. And so we are again at this precious book, the book of Ephesians, and chapter 6, verses 10 through verses 14. And so we're going to read God's word together and then we are going to listen to the message that God has for us today. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take on to you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having your lawyers girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, the final stand before the rapture of the church. This is our, our, my friend, I tell you, this is our moment. This is the time of great victory for the church. The battle has been raging since the church was born on the day of Pentecost. There were through everything against the church. But I'm saying to you today, glory to God. It is our moment for victory because why? It is because our commander and chief is returning glory to God. Hallelujah. And it's going to take us out of this world before the wrath of God. is power upon planet earth. It is going to be a time of great horror for the people of the world. There is going to be loss of lives in the billions, in the billions. The world is going to face trouble as never before. But we would not be here when this happens, glory to God. Jesus comes and he snatches us away before this takes place. Hallelujah. It is the final standard, the final moment, the final glory of the church. Bow with me in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this ongoing series. We thank you, dear Lord, for your, your word that is powerful. The word that is anointed. The word is like that hammer that breaks in pieces. Glory to God. The word of God that has the ability to transform and to change lives. Thank you, dear Lord, for accomplishing your purpose here today in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. And please do have uh, your seats. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God wants us to stand. Amen. And to stand strong and to stand firm. Not wavering in your faith, my brother and sister. It reminds me of the story about um, in heaven. There were two signs. And the first one read, uh, men uh, who did uh, what their wives told them to do. And so under that line, uh, it stretched uh, for miles, as far as the eye could see, men who did what their wives told them to do. And the second sign stated men uh, 
who made their own decisions and uh, did uh, um, uh, they didn't do what their wives you know, wanted them to do. And so they were real men as it were. But under that sign, no one was, was found, not a single man, except this little Nashi guy. So Peter was intrigued by this lone man. And he said, uh, he said, listen, this is remarkable. For all the time that I have been here, I've been watching closely. This sign that has men who did what their wives said uh, has always been miles long and there has never been a, a man that would stand up uh, in the line that you are standing up. I ask you, how did you manage uh, to stand under this sign? And the man said, my wife told me to stand. <laughs> wow. Glory to God. But friends, I tell you, our God is telling us to stand. Amen. If you have a wife is telling you to stand for Jesus, praise God. If you have a husband is telling you to stand for Jesus, praise God. If you have children telling you to stand for Jesus, praise God. But I'm telling you, amen, that Jesus is telling us uh, to stand glory to God. Uh, and we are standing with Christ and we are standing for Christ. Amen. We will not back down. We will not lay down our weapons. Glory to God. Uh, we will continue to fight the good fight of faith. Amen. This is the time of severe testing that is taking place. I mentioned to you that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that they stood against a tyrant king. They stood against a king that demanded worship to an idol that he had made. And he said, if you will not bow down to this golden image, you are going to be killed. Suddenly you are going to be thrown alive. You'll be burnt alive in a furnace of fire. But praise God for those boys. They said, we will not bow. Do what you want. Do your worst. King Nebuchadnezzar. We will not bow. But we want you to know that our God, the God that we serve, is more than able to deliver us from this furnace that you have set up. But if you choose not to steal, we will not bow down. Praise God uh, for men and women over the years uh, that will not bow down to Satan, will not bow down to what he wants, uh, but will stand true to the Lord. Uh, in Finland, and I came across this recently sent by one of our members. Uh, there is a member of parliament in Finland and a pastor as well, a bishop as well. And they were facing two years of imprisonment. Why? Because of a quotation that they used in the Bible. Because of what the Bible had to say about this movement that is racing across the world today like wildfire, like rapid fire. This movement now is situated in Trinidad and Tobago and it is growing strong and more followers every day are joining in. What movement am I talking about? I'm talking about the LGBTQ. The LGBTQ. As you all know, L stands for lesbian. G stands for gay. And B stands for bisexual or pansexual. It simply means that these people, uh, well, whatever it is, whether male or female, they don't have a problem in who, all right, that they are intimate with. Uh, and T stands for transgender. Those that are changing uh, their sexes as it were. And G, of course, stands for queer or questioning, all right? And so everything else fits in into that bracket. If they miss out anything, Q settles that. Yeah. Whatever lifestyle that they choose, whatever their preferences are, their sexual preferences, it may not even be with human beings. It could even be with animals. So Q will bring that in, that a queer, questioning behavior. And so, this, uh, we're talking about a member of parliament, my friend, 
no ordinary person and the pastor who sided with that member of parliament and they were faced with two years of imprisonment why because of a bible quote in the book of romans the bible says that god wrath is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and it lists out what it is about about men with men and women with women and so the prosecutor said walk away walk away from your stand and we are going to drop the charges what would those persons do would they say well okay we retract our statement we retract our belief in the bible we stay silent on that particular subject they were given an ultimatum retract it or you will face two years in jail but I'm here to tell you is that they stood up, glory to God. They did not back down, they stood up with the Bible, hallelujah, amen. And so across the board, hallelujah, they were known as two individuals that stood for the truth and give credibility, amen, to those that will stand for Christ and be willing to pay whatever it is and this reality we don't know if one day we will face this reality in Trinidad and Tobago it might come here where we might be brought before the magistrate we might be brought before the courthouse we might be, be brought before prosecutors and they might give us the same ultimatum as well would we stand brother and sister would you stand if that day comes up but I'm here to tell you that day has come it, there's a time now the time has come that we got to stand up for Christ glory to God and stand with the Bible there are many mockers and many deceivers in these times the devil wants to change the law and the word of God but we must stand for Jesus and we must stand strong can I hear amen somebody hallelujah there's a sad sad story about Israel after a great conquest and she entered into the land of Canaan Joshua led the army and they were victorious up to this morning in my devotion I'm reading about the conquest of Joshua Hallelujah, the Lord gave him victory over the, the Ammonites and the Parasites and the Jebusites and as I said all the Parasites the Lord gave him decisive victory not uh, one king was able to stand 31 kings in all he vanquished glory to God because why? Joshua walked in obedience and led Israel into victory they were obedient to God only saved the instance when Achan stole of the gold and of the silver and the Babylonian garment in the matter of Jericho when the walls of Jericho came tumbling down he saw some things that he coveted and you got to watch all my friend about these things and they were cursed the Lord said do not touch them do not take them but this man was overcome by temptation when he saw these things he said I must have it and he brought it home and he, he hid it in his tent and so when they went out to battle against a small enemy, AI, a handful of people, oh, they were not able to stand up against the enemies. The enemies whipped them and they ran for their lives. And they cried out to God and said, God, what trouble is this? Now when the enemies around us have heard that we have been whipped, they will come and crush us. And God says, come on, stop your crying. You will have no victory anymore because there is sin in the camp. In other words, the scamp was right in the camp. Oh, I tell you that Satan is so subtle that he wants to come into the church. I tell you, he wants to come and to cause havoc in the church. He will use anybody that is not walking in the spirit to cause a hindrance and a stumbling. 
stumbling block. That's why we got to be filled with the Spirit. And each believer must be walking in obedience to God. We are connected. We are like a chain in the church. If one is weak, the whole chain is compromised. We got all got to walk in unison. Amen. Uprightly in righteousness and holiness, glory of God. And then only we can be strong and be victorious as the church of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Oh, and the Lord had to deal with that. Amen. He said, listen, you got to get rid. you got to get rid of that sin. And so he can was found out uh, and so uh, he had to be dealt with uh, his family paid an awesome price because of his sin uh, I encourage you those of you here who are in leadership uh, and those of you who are parents and so on uh, you gotta understand uh, that that what you bring uh, to the table and what you bring to your home uh, and what you bring to your family God wants you uh, to be a sterling example and a shining and if you are compromising and if you are not walking in obedience, your family will be hindered. God will not be able to bless your children, parents. If you are not honoring the Lord, you got to honor the Lord and the Lord's blessing is going to come upon your wife. It's going to come upon your son. It's going to come upon your daughter. It's going to come upon your grandchildren. Praise God. Hallelujah. You got to be telling that I'm going to have the blessing of God upon my family and know my position, glory to God. I am going to serve the Lord because I don't want a curse to come upon my family, glory to God. Hallelujah. And but that was the only instance uh, that Israel had sinned. And so she moved on, victory on to victory. All the days of Joshua, there was success. But Joshua died and, and he passed on and and there arose now another generation, a new generation, and they did not know. You see, the, the previous generation had failed because it didn't recite to them the laws and the victories, glory to God. This is why it's important that we teach our children the word of the Lord, that they will teach our ch their children. It's important that we bring up our children in the fear of the Lord, that they will do to their children as well. The failure of one generation can bring disaster upon many generations to come. It's like a ripple effect where you take a stone and you throw it in a pond. There will be an immediate splash there, but then you notice ripples, and that ripple will spread to the outer reaches of that pond. This is what happened, the rippling effect. And so that generation did not know the Lord as a generation before the Joshua generation. And God had to speak to them. He raised up judges to bring them back to the Lord. And in Judges chapter 2 verses 1 to verse 3, hear what the Lord warned Israel about. He said to Israel, listen, I brought you up out of Egypt and I've led you into the land that I swore to give you to your forefathers. And I said to you, I will never break my covenant with you. That is who our God is. He is a covenant keeping God. What he says, he will do. That's why I stand upon this word. It Amen. doesn't matter what happens. I'm standing upon this word because my God is a covenant keeping God. Amen. You see these promises here? I believe them promises. And I believe this word, glory to God. And I'm operating by this word. It doesn't matter what has come. There have been many, many trials in my life uh, over the years. And what has kept me in is this promise. Uh, when God called me into ministry, God gave me a specific word, glory to God. It wasn't a man coming and saying to me, my friend. It was not my own heart speaking to me and saying uh, that I'm called to do something. My own mind or my own uh, ambition. There are so many ambitious people today that are saying that God has called them. But they have called themselves and not God. Uh, but God spoke to me and he said to me in Jeremiah chapter 1. Uh, he said, before I formed you, I knew you in my, your mother's belly. 
That's what God said to me, glory to God. God said uh, that I have risen you up and I've called you to be a prophet uh, unto the nations. Uh, and don't say you are young or too young because I will be with you. God spoke to me very clearly, glory to God, hallelujah. Because I could do this on my own, my friend. Uh, it was too big what God was calling me to, to challenge him. I had to leave my comfort zone. Uh, I had to leave my security to step out in total favor and to trust God with no money, with no backup, with nothing at all. I had to trust God. God was calling, hallelujah, praise God. And we stepped out, my wife and myself, we stepped out, glory to God, on the authority of this word, amen. And that is why over the years, when you see challenges and trials come my way, I get back to my calling. I get back to my foundation and I said, God, you call me, praise the Lord. I didn't call myself, amen. Hallelujah. And you call me and I will continue to trust in you, praise God. Hallelujah. Because if I did call myself, I would not make it. I would have put it long ago and turned back. But praise God, I knew it is who saved me and I knew it is who called me, praise God. This is the word of God. Stand on this word, my brother and sister. Lay hold upon the promises of God. What God says in his word, he is able to do it. The Bible says heaven and earth will pass. But God's word will never pass away. Build your life upon the word. Dare to stand upon the word. Exercise your faith in this word. Hallelujah. The Bible still says, if you serve the Lord your God, He's going to bless your bread. Exodus 22, 25. It said, He will bless your bread if you serve the Lord. When you serve the Lord, because you're serving the Lord. Amen. A lot of us, you know, we want to pay we get work. Come on somebody. A lot of people want pay before they put on that day's work. Listen, if you hire a man to work for you, you don't give him that money before. Come on. Which are you going to give a man of money before and he'll do the work? You're going to go back straight down paying and he said $10,000 to straight down pay that car. And you was okay. Here's a $10,000. When you're ready, you could go here and straight down pay my car. You going to do that? Oh, I don't think so, my friend. You going to say, boy, listen, when you do that day's work, at the end of the day's work, you going to get that pay. Am I correct, somebody? Hallelujah. A lot of you say, God, if you do this to me and if you do that for me, I'm surely going to serve you. I'm going to church the Lord. If you heal me, Lord, I'm going to go to church. If you give me money, I'm going to go to church. God says you got it wrong side, glory to God. God said, if you serve me, then I'm going to bless you, glory to God. Amen. If you put me first, then I'm going to bless you, glory to God. God says, I'm going to take away them sickness from the midst of thee. You want them sickness to go? You serve the Lord, glory to God. In spirit and in truth, praise God. You want to see God bless your finances, amen. You serve the Lord. Put God first in your life. This is what the word of God says. And I stand upon this word. Give him praise this morning. Glory to God. What it is that? What happened to Israel? And so God said to them, I want you now, you shall not make a covenant. You shall not make an alliance with the people of this land. You are to break down their altars, but you have disobeyed me. And why have you done this? Now therefore I tell you, I will not drive them out before you. Listen to what God says. They are going to be thorns. Thorns in your sides. And their gods will become a snare for you. The, when it says thorns, it means that they are going to be trouble in your sight. A lot of people are having trouble. Constant trouble. A thorn in their side because they would not walk in obedience and do what God says to do. Some people are reaping the consequences of decisions that have been made, bad decisions, out of the will of God. And now it is a thorn in their side. Constantly. It's like that pain, it won't go away at all. Come on, somebody. 
You go to work with that pain. And then you come back with that pain. You lie down with that pain. And you get up with that pain. I'm not talking about your husband, sister, so don't get me wrong this morning. <laughs> well, I'm not talking about your wife. Amen. Hallelujah. But that constant pain, that thorn in the flesh, God says, this is what is happening to you. This is why you can't catch a break. This is why you're not experiencing victory in your life. This is why you are being oppressed in your life. You have a thorn in your side because what? I told you, do not make a covenant with the people of the land. Do not make an alliance with the people of the land. You are a special people. You are a chosen people. You are a holy people. Glory to God. You are sanctified people. You are Holy Ghost filled people. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You cannot make a, an alliance with the people of the land. Now therefore I tell you. You cannot overcome them. You cannot drive them. You no longer have power. You no longer have the authority at all. You have lost it because why? It is because you are walking in disobedience. You are covenanted with the people of the land. And this is exactly what had happened to them. Listen. Even though the people continue to worship God. They also worship the gods of the other nations. Next to the temple of the true one living God. They place images of the false goddess Asherah and the false god Baal. They had effectively become the compromising church. It was not that they had completely abandoned God though. No, they still were worshipping God. But they wanted to incorporate uh, the other gods uh, as well. And they were so spiritually blind, they did not see the contradiction. That's uh, what compromise uh, will do. That was happening to Israel. They were willing to live with these uh, obvious uh, contradictions uh, and feel comfortable about it. Uh, have no conviction about it. Uh, is this a sad thing that we can make alliances uh, with the flesh? We can make alliances with the world? Yes, uh, we can make alliances uh, even with sin uh, and still be worshipping God. Uh, still coming to church. Uh, still reading your Bibles. Uh, still praying. Uh, and, and we can be comfortable with it uh, and be alright with it. Uh, but I tell you, God says, I am not alright with that. I am not alright with compromising. I am not alright with you worshipping two gods. You got to make up your mind, the Lord is one God. You have all the ultimatum God is saying. If Baal be God, worship him. If Asherah, if she be God, then worship her. But if the Lord be God, you got to worship him in spirit and in truth. That's the ultimatum that Elijah gave on Mount Carmel on the Shodom where there were 850 false prophets. He gave them an ultimatum. He says, listen, if these gods here that you are worshiping, if they they are the, the, the true God. Go ahead. Go ahead. No problem. But if Jehovah God, the eternal God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob be God, then worship him. But you cannot worship um, the true and living God and have other false gods as well. Come on. Give the Lord praise. Someone. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. No. That is what compromise is all about. They pretended an Asherah. They pretended that she was a consort. A consort simply means an associate of the God who led them out of Egypt. No, my friend, it was not Asherah. It was not Baal that led them out of Egyptian bondage. It was the Lord God Almighty, hallelujah, that led them out. But they were compromising and worshipping them both. And so the worship of Asherah and Baal included the worst kind of lewd and obscene 
sins uh, and also human sacrifices uh, were offered uh, to these other gods. Um, now the worship of a holy God uh, was practiced alongside this unimaginable acts. Uh, could you imagine that? And no one seemed to notice uh, and no one seemed to bother uh, and no one seemed to care. And so that's the theme that was running through the book of Judges uh, in several times. Uh, the book uh, uh, closes by saying in 21, 25, uh, in those days there was no king in Israel and every man did that was right in his own eyes. Wow. We have to be careful as well about uh, compromising and incorporating in our worship uh, other gods uh, and other idols. These idols of this world, they are powerless. And let me say this somebody, they are powerless to save. They have no power, nothing at all. It is deception. The story is told, and this is the true story of Hideyoshi, a Japanese warlord who ruled over Japan in the late 1500s. And so he commissioned a colossal statue of Buddha for a shrine in Kyoto. And so it took 50,000 men five years to build this colossal statue of Buddha. But the work had scarcely been completed when there was an earthquake, a massive earthquake that rocked that place. And so in 1596, it brought the roof of this shrine, this temple, crashing down on Buddha that was being built, wrecked that statue. In a rage, in a rage, this Japanese warlord, he shot an arrow at the fallen Colossus. And he said, as he shot that arrow, he said, listen, I have put you here at great, great expense. And now you can even look after your own temple and look after your own self. He came to the realization that this idol he had made with his own hands was absolutely powerless. Wow. You know, folks, it is happening today. It is happening today, just yesterday. I was on my way performing a funeral, heading out to a Waterloo cremation site to do the internment. And I saw a line of vehicles, a great line of vehicles. I saw them with pomp and prestige, with police officers as well in the front. Big music trucks, not one, but a couple other vehicles blasting music and whatnot. What was this? And I saw that they were carrying them. They were carrying an idol. They were carrying an image, and there's a huge temple not too far there. I'm, I'm suspecting that they are carrying this there. And they are so excited about this whole thing. It is amazing, my friend. Listen, I don't have to put my Jesus at the back of my bus and carry him away. Come on, somebody. Amen. I don't have to put my Jesus at the back of the car and, and the trunk and say, Listen, I'm going to carry you out today for a ride. You put on your seatbelt, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. I'm carrying you for a ride. Listen, my friend, my God to be. Amen. Hallelujah. For, for him to be carried in any bus or any truck. The heavens of heavens cannot contain my God. He is the creator of the heavens and the earth. Praise God. You know what is the wonderful thing about it? Is I don't carry my God. My God carries me. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He carries me. Hallelujah. Because many times I don't have the strength, but he carries me. Many times I tell you I'm discouraged, but Jesus carries me. Glory to God. Many times I'm sick, but the Lord carries me. Many times I'm broken financially, but the Lord carries me. He has been carrying me all my life. Praise the name of the Lord. And he will continue to carry me. And when I lay me down, if the rapture don't take place, when I lay me down to sleep, glory to God, I don't have to worry because the Lord will carry me even in death. No wonder why the psalmist says in 23 and verse 3, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because the Lord is with me. Amen. And I want to die. 
their cup of me. Give him praise, somebody. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. That's the God that we serve. The true and uh, the living God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, that my eyes uh, were open when I was saved. Every day I said, Lord, I thank you. I thank you for saving me and bringing me out from darkness. I can't thank you enough. I still see myself as a little boy. I still see myself as a 10-year-old boy. I still see myself uh, living in a home that was surrounded by many idols. Um, I still see myself uh, going on in the yard and praying uh, sincerely and honestly with all my heart. Um, I still see that boy doing these things and God came to me, glory to God. And, and he opened up my eyes of today, amen. I know the true and the living God. I was once worshipping the creations that God made. I bow down to that son that is 93 million miles away. I pay tribute and homage to that son and the creation of, of God. But praise the name of the Lord. No longer do I do these things because I don't worship his creation anymore. I worship the creator. Praise God. God want to set you on a higher way in a better place. Amen. Glory to God. Some worshiping the creations of one day the sun that man is worshiping. One day the moon. And I'm saying to you all today, there are many moon worshippers today as well too. But I say to you, their God will fail and their God will fall. Because the Bible says the time will come in the great tribulation that when the great lights of, of the world, they will refuse to give light. The Bible says the stars of people worship, it is going to fall from heaven. Everything that man has trusted in all his life is going to disappoint him. They're going to see their God's crush and their God's broken. They're going to see their God's vanish. But when the heavens and the earth are pass, I tell you, Jesus will reign and continue to reign forever and ever and ever. Give him praise, somebody. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God, glory to God. Oh, I bless the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. But they failed miserably to take a stand and to allow the heathen practices to influence them and to let them to their downfall. And the blessings of God stopped flowing upon them because they were now walking in disobedience. That caused them, the life of compromise cost them their home, my friend. It cost them their land and it will cost them their lives. Because of that very fact, they were rooted from Canaan land. And they went into Babylonian slavery for seven years because of the alliances that they had made in life of compromise with them. The, the, the idol practices of their land. Their children, their grandchildren went into bondage. You got to understand this, that the decision that you make today have a definite impact upon your life and the lives of your children as well. Praise God. There are four things uh, that influences our decision. And number one, it is peer pressure. Now I want you to follow along with me today. Why do some people make decisions in your life? And how do some people make decisions in your life? It will surprise you that, that the things uh, that people do and how they come about doing it. The first one is peer pressure. You know what I'm talking about. Others are influencing your decision. Rather than you standing up like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, everybody else was bowing down to King Nebuchadnezzar Golden Image. There was a lot of pressure on that day. A lot of pressure. Everybody is doing it. If we don't do it, we're going to look bad. And so many were bowing down. Not because... Um, of the fact uh, that they looked at it uh, and said, why am I doing it? No, because somebody. Have you ever made decisions because somebody else doing it? Or everybody is doing it? That you make your decision on the basis of that? You have not intellectually sat down and look at it properly. Is this right? Is this good? Is it wrong? No, because Tom and Harry doing it, well, I'm going to do it. Uh, you understand? This is what you call prayer pressure. It doesn't affect children in school alone. Prayer pressure in school is real. It is real. 
But peer pressure affects uh, not only young people, but it affects even adults as well. You're surprised to know that many of the decisions that people make in this world today, it is because of prayer pressure. Somebody else is doing it. And so I think because they are doing it, I am going to do it as well. Going along with the crowd, Aaron, Moses' brother knew full stand about that. In Exodus chapter 32 verses 1 to 5, the Bible tells us that when the people saw that Moses was delayed in coming down, he went up to the mountain to receive the Ten Commandments of God. Forty days and forty nights, uh, he was up there. They gathered to Aaron because Aaron was the secondary leader now of the group. Um, that was Moses' elder brother. He was uh, three years older than Moses, Aaron. And so they came to Aaron and they said, Listen, we don't know what is happening here with Moses. He left us here so long, might he probably been dead. He may be coming on that mountain. Listen, Aaron, we want you to make us some gods. Yes, sir. And we will say that this now is our God. And Aaron said, well, if that's what you want, who knows? They probably came to him and pointed the finger at him and said, Aaron, we're asking you, you know, we're telling you about him. Who knows? If we have come out here with a machete as well too. I'm just trying to put a little more flavor in the message. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. You don't know. They come out with me with, with banners protesting and all kinds of things. Pressure on that boy. Aaron was under pressure. You have been there. You know what I'm talking about. Yes. And he said, we're telling you, we're not asking. You better make us some, uh, some God's here for Yes. <laughs> wow. What will Aaron do? Will he stand? Will he stand? Oh, I tell you, Aaron crumbled. Aaron crumbled. You think that he knew better than that. He was uh, Moses' spokesman that spoke uh, on behalf of Moses to Pharaoh. He was mighty in the eyes of the children of Israel. God had appointed him a high position. And now he is under pressure. And so Aaron cracked. He cracked. He crumbled him. And he said, well, okay, well, if this is what you want, well, you know, I will just have to do what you want. Take off your earrings, your gold earrings that your wives have and your sons have and your daughters and all the children that they are wearing and bring it to me. And the people did that. They took off all the earrings and so on. And they brought it to Aaron. And the Bible says that they handed it to him and he cast them and made a calf out of that gold an idol, he fashioned it with a tool uh, yeah. and then he said to Israel these are your gods that brought you out of the land uh, of Egypt, uh, my goodness, uh, how could Aaron do such uh, a thing uh, he, he caused the people to sin a great sin uh, against the Lord uh, he said Israel, tomorrow is a feast uh, unto the Lord, uh, and so the next day the people came and offered sacrifices uh, to this this golden idol that, that Aaron had, had made. And after what the Bible says, this is what the Bible says, and the people rose up to eat and drink and to indulge in revelry. Oh, I tell you, they messed up themselves pretty bad. Every wicked thing that was practiced by the heathen nations, they were now practicing it. But I tell you something, what Aaron did was so bad. Because what he did was in reinduce them. The plague upon Egypt was not brought upon the people of God. Folks, I want to say to you, be very careful, my friend. You see what is happening in the world today? What the world is reaping because of its sin and because of its wickedness. And if we practice what the world is practicing, we are going to bring that. You're going to bring those curses upon yourself and upon your family. You have to be very careful about following the ways of this world. God has called you to be a separated people unto himself. A holy people, a peculiar people, praise God. That you should show forth the presence of the Lord. Give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. Moses, uh, Aaron rather, caused the death of 3,000 Israelites that day by making this golden calf when the plague hit Israel because of their sin. And furthermore, he caused the breaking of the original Ten Commandments. 
Because when Moses came down that mountain, he saw the wickedness of the people and the sin. Moses was overwhelmed and he took those ten commandments written with the very finger of God, the first, the original ten commandments. And he broke them at the foot of the mountain. And then he called the Levites and said, Who's on the Lord's side? Come unto me right now. They had to make a decision, glory to God. Oh, we have to be very careful about this uh, happening to us uh, today. Yes, uh, maybe Aaron was afraid to stand uh, because uh, he feared for his life. Uh, maybe he afraid to stand because he said, um, I, I just don't want to be different. Everybody is singing this song, uh, and so I will go along with the tune. But he will pay a great price, and so will Israel. Have you been doing some things lately because others are doing it? And you have considered whether it is sin or not sin. Take for instance cigarette smoking for that matter. I don't know if any of you are still addicted to cigarette smoking. But it is a very, very addictive drug. And it will destroy lives. And yes, sir, it is the main cause of lung cancer in the world today. In case you do not know about what it will do, my friend, very, very addictive. But do you know many people get caught in this habit because of peer pressure? Because of someone else, their friends doing it, and it seemed to be the father, it seemed to be the thing to do. Yes, sir. And so people, because of peer pressure, they find themselves becoming addictive to certain lifestyles and certain uh, drugs. Uh, and so the marketers, they count on this um, because they don't want you to be different. Um. So here in the world today, this is how, this is how they market their products. Uh. Everybody is doing it. It is the new thing now. And so they're saying, buy my clothes, uh, buy my brand name clothes. I still cannot understand uh, how would a woman uh, buy a purse uh, that could be a hundred thousand dollars. I cannot understand that for the life of me. Hello, somebody. And I can buy one for my wife and no problem for fifty dollars. And she will carry the same thing in that fifty dollar purse as you can carry in your hundred dollar purse, my friend. I can't see the reasoning, but you know, you know what? Why it's happening, folks? It is the pressure. If you want to be among the elite, yes. If you want, yes, to be seen as somebody that has arrived, somebody with status, somebody because these things represent things to people. Buying brand name clothes. Hello, I, I will never, never buy a shoe. My goodness, for two thousand dollars. Hello, when I can buy something just the same, but for two hundred dollars, why would I do such a thing? People do that because of the status quo. When you wear that, it sends a signal. Yes, boy, we are on top. We are the big gods. We are the big boys and so on. They spend their whole salary buying a pair of shoes for two thousand dollars. My goodness, I can't even fathom. I can't even understand that. In making you walk on air, you still gonna walk on that dirt road. You still gonna walk through the potholes. Come on, somebody. Your walk is not gonna be differently at all. We still gonna get them same places. Hallelujah. But you know what? The pressure is on. Buy my clothes, buy my certain type of a, a brand name, uh, things that they have there. Buy this and, and buy that, the peer pressure that has been put uh, upon us. And another area that is so strong is the area of alcohol. Alcohol. Why do people become alcoholics? How do people become alcoholics? Uh, and how do people define themselves, uh, yes, uh, drinking this fire water? I could never, never comprehend that. My, let me tell you something. A nice uh, solo, a solo, a, a, a soda, a, 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 a green soda, hello, a orange soda, a grape. Soda. Let me tell you something. That is so nice and sweet. And when you put this alcohol fire, I can't understand that. And people are drinking this fire water, brother and sister. I don't know how you could prefer some of that burning you all inside, but 
you're drinking it. You know why? The image of it. The peer pressure of it. And then it becomes so deadly because it is the most addictive drug upon the planet Earth. And that is alcohol, my friend. If you are struggling with that today, God wants to deliver you in the name of Jesus. These are the true idols that I'm talking about today. I'm not just talking about images that people worship. No, no, no. I'm talking about those that are in our hearts and the worst kind of idols that there is an idolatry, my friend. The things that take the place of God in our lives. The story is told about Mel Trotter, the famous rescue mission worker was the son of a bartender. You gotta be careful parents about what job that you choose. Come on somebody, all right? He was a bartender, the son of a bartender, and drank as much as he served. <laughs> yeah, God, busting that business dog. <laughs> so Trump have fallen in his father's footsteps, losing job after job. He could not hold on to a job. Isn't this the signs of you see of somebody? who's influenced by drugs, they can't hold on to nothing. They can't hold on to a work, they can't hold on to a job, they can't hold on to an education, they can't even hold on to their own wife. Yeah. Come on somebody. Yeah. Am I correct? Yeah. Yes, these are the things, these are these are real things that I'm talking about here. So each time we lost the job, he promised, he said, I'm gonna reform, I'm gonna reform, I'm gonna reform. I will start doing better. But each time, again, he said that he failed. And he failed miserably. But then his baby boy died. That, I tell you, shook him up as never before. And so he made his way to Chicago, where he said it is too much. I'm a miserable failure. I am no good. I'm a drunkard. And look, I've lost my boy because of drunkenness. And so he said, I'm going to kill myself. I'm going to commit suicide. And his plan was to go to Lake Michigan and kill himself. And so he sold his shoes. His last, his pair of shoes, he, he sold his shoes before he would drown himself. For what? You can imagine that, my friend? Wow. He sold his shoes for a last group. My. This is when you, I tell you, are really addicted is that you will sell your shoe. Come on, somebody. I see people doing that because of drugs, because of dope, because of crack and cocaine, and because of marijuana. This is why I can't understand why our government will legalize marijuana, why a lot of people to plant it. And look how destructive it is. Under the cover of medicinal purposes. <laughs> Under the disguise of medicinal purposes, uh, my my goodness, what are you sending the nation the, and the country into for profit for money? And then you lose your sanity and you lose uh, your soul eventually. He sold his shoes uh, for a drink and was walking out barefoot uh, through the snow towards his death. Uh, but then he heard the music, uh, he heard the sound inside the Pacific Garden Mission. And it's Lord Lennon to go in the end of that service. Sir. And when he went into that service, gloriously, hallelujah, God saved him. What the drugs could not do, what alcohol could not do for all them years, Jesus did it in one moment of time. And I'm saying to you all there, and I'm saying to you in here, the Lord of God, hallelujah. What the alcohol can do, and the cigarette and the marijuana can do, and the coke can do, give me that lasting peace and happiness. Jesus can do right now, glory to God. If you repent, you will change your life. Hallelujah. And you will no longer need them drugs. You will no longer need the alcohol and the cigarette, my friend. You will no longer need the rum shop. You will no longer need the whole house, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you. You will no longer need a fixer because Jesus will be your ultimate fix. Give him praise. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. And so for the next 40 years, started it every day. He could do to help those like himself who had fallen prey to the deceptiveness of temptation and of sin. I say to you, Satan advertising is never realistic. 
Never realistic. Do you know what is the status of our country? And I had to look up this recently in preparing this message for you all today. But Trinidad and Tobago is in a bad, bad place when it comes to drugs. Or when it comes to alcohol in particular. No, this is facts that I have gotten them. In Trinidad and Tobago, more than 60% of homes consume alcohol, my friend. That is what is happening in Trinidad and Tobago. That is alarming. No wonder why they are more rum shop than their churches. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Yes, there are more places than that. Every place that you can see, and everywhere you can go, you're sure to find a rum shopping. You know what rum shopping happened last year, my son? My friend, one rum shop after another. It seems that there's not enough rum that you can sell in this country, my friend. People buy rum more than they buy food for their children. Come on, somebody. They will spend their hard work money. They will buy carrot, they will buy beer, they will buy booze and whatnot. For every time you go somewhere, I must have some rum. You go to Cora, I must have a case of beer, cooling. I go to Mandalina, I must have two bottles a white oak on the side. I had to stop ten times before I reach the beach on the river so we could hit it at one. Come on, somebody. This is fun. This is excitement. This is wonderful. This is life. And I tell you, they advertise it so, so beautifully. Yes, they show you, oh Lord, the good time that you can have when you're drinking beer. In fact, you're not a man if you're not drinking beer. One time I saw one I good this month. This man, I tell you, with his hairy dress riding on a horse, yes, and he drinking this beer. Everybody say, wow, wow. I could just see myself in that picture when I drink a beer like I ride in a horse and I'm free and whatnot. This is how that they operate, my friend. And this is the state of our country here today. Over 60% of homes that they drink alcohol. And I just feel that there are some Christians that come to church that they drink alcohol too. I just feel that. Do you feel that too, my brother? <laughs> Do you feel that? And some of them I tell you after Saturday night last night too. They come Sunday morning in church and they... And everybody says, they filled with the Holy Ghost, boy. <laughs> Come on. Oh, yeah. That's a Holy Ghost Christian there. Yeah. Yes, really feel it. It's a hangover they have in church, brother and sister. Don't get that. It's a hangover and whatnot. Now, these days, I tell you, we could hide a lot of behind the mask. You can't spell it too much behind the mask. <laughs> uh, yes, this is, this is the truth, what is happening today. Mm -hmm. In some churches, I tell you, the silver alcohol for the people when it comes to communion. And all too, we expect the people to do. If you're giving them alcohol, <laughs> come on, somebody. We're expecting them to do. Uh huh. We don't do that, amen, somebody. So I want you to still notice our communion is free of alcohol, amen. Hallelujah, glory to God. If you're going to truly be filled with the Spirit and Paul side in the streets, we are not. Going, brothers and sisters, to get you filled with the spirit by bringing alcohol for you to drink. No, if you're going to be filled, you're really going to be filled with the spirit of God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. But this is so deceptive of the devil, the way that he, he advertises his, his products. But what they don't show you, they do not show you the end result. All they show you is the beginning. The beer companies. Do you think that they show you the crash cars? Do you think that they show you the, the people that have been paralyzed and handicapped because of drunk drivers? Do you think they show you the babies in the caskets because of, of drunkenness? Do you think they show that the carnage in our nation's road when they're advertising their booze and they're advertising their drugs? Of course not. They do not show you those things. It will not help them to make more money. It will not put money in their product, in their pockets. It will not sell their products. So they focus on the beginning rather than the ending. But no matter how beautiful the temptation appears, it is only a cloak of the reality that is there after. The pain, the heart the death and finally the judgment of God 
The Bible tells us in James 1 15 uh, and seeing him when it is finished, the end result of sin, regardless how tantalizing it might be, yeah. it will bring forth death. Yeah. It will bring forth death. Sin is so pleasurable at the beginning. Oh, you think the devil is going to sell anything by showing you the poison? He hides it within the apple. Come on, somebody. Amen. That's what the devil does. He hides it within the apple, that poison. And you don't know that it's really poison that you're eating. Because it is cloaked, yes, in something beautiful and something tantalizing. A man was praying with his pastor at the altar one day. And he prayed a prayer. And the pastor heard him pray that prayer many times before. Pastor getting kind of tired of this kind of prayer. And so he prayed and he said, Lord, Lord. Take away them cobwebs out of my life. And just as he said this, the pastor interrupted him. And he gave the brother a hunch. And he said, brother, if you want the Lord to take away them, spy, uh, them, them cobwebs from your life, then you've got to kill that spider you're minding. <laughs> oh, <on somebody. laughs> Amen. Do you want God to take away the cobweb and you mind it, spider? For a moment you're like, go on somebody. What? You know, people are easier. You know, take away them cobweb when you might get spider in your house. I mean, what do you expect the cobwebs to go away? If you might get spider, get the root of it out. Come on, somebody. Get the root of sin out. When you get the root of sin out, glory to God, amen. You have no problem with the fruit, amen. A tree can't be a fruit if it has no root. So on, somebody. Amen. It's not with that root stem. We've got to get that root out. Amen. In closing, not too long, I visited with the family and praying for them with their many, many needs. And so one of the family members said, Pastor, what's your pay for this, this boy? He got he more than 13, 14 years old, I suspect. I said, well, what's wrong with him? He looking old, he looking good. He said, well, Pastor, he got a big problem. I said, what's that problem? He said, Pastor, that boy on pornography like that. He bad on pornography. Wow, he's so bad at pornography that boy can't. I mean, he ain't going to school no more. You know, he ain't going to school no more. I said, the boy can't take education. I said, there's no shame in him doing a trade. No, in fact, you could do a trade and you can make more money. Amen. Even than, than having all that education. Trade is a very profitable thing that you can get into. I'm just saying it out there. Praise God. Not everybody may have the ability and the resources to go to a university and so on. But that doesn't mean to see your life has come to an end. You can do a trade. There are many trade people around us here today that are making good money and supporting their families and doing well, very, very well. Praise God. No shame in doing a trade. Glory to God. Even you women can do things. We have people here making cakes and things like that. You can do a trade, sewing and whatnot. We have people sewing here and different things like that. You can have a, your own uh, business as well too. And you can do really, really well. Amen. If you put God first and you apply yourself. I know what I'm talking about, glory to God. I said, well, send that board. So we did. He said, but well, you can hold on to that as well too. Because the boy mind is so wrecked. It's only on pornography. Only on pornography. And so I prayed with that boy. And I said, Lord, you take away that you know, that her habit, yes, take away that bondage. Yes, that he is trapped in with pornography. A little boy like that. And, and I'm pretty concerned too because, you know, uh, these people, when, they, when, they, when they're on this thing and they're seeing this thing, they look for an opportunity to practice it. That is why you have to be very careful, my friend, with these younger ones as well because they are obsessed with this thing. They want to practice it and they want to practice with their cousins and anybody. You understand? Very careful about it. It's dangerous and it's deadly and so on. I pray with that boy and I pray God will deliver him. And so I happened to return there sometime a few days or so, a week or so ago and so on. And I wanted to follow up on the situation. And we said, they said, you know, Pastor, no more problem with pornography. I said, wow, that's fantastic. The boy looked changed. He looked different. No more problem with pornography. I said, how did that come about? He said, if his phone broke. <laughs> yeah. 
the phone broke, he can't, he can't go on there to sing nothing again. Thank you, Jesus. I'll tell you, he got rid of that spider. <laughs> Kill the spider and no more cobwebs. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah. Join with me in prayer this morning. Father, we thank you again for such a powerful word coming to us today. Some people might be dealing with some of the cobwebs in their lives, dear Father. We've got to get to the root of it, dear Father. You do not want us to live in defeat, but in victory. Praise God. Hallelujah. Some of us might be struggling with some addictions in their life, dear Father. But I pray for deliverance today and your willingness to surrender. Amen. Some of us are struggling probably with idolatry. We have placed other things before God. Other loves that we have before God. God is not first in our life. And so anything can become an idol. Our money can become an idol. Our house can become, our job can become our idol. Even our family can become an idol as well too. Dear Father, we got to be careful. See, that is so subtle. Because anything that takes the place of the worship of God is an idol. And it must be cast out. Otherwise, you're going to be a torn in our side. Yes. They're going to be troubled in our side forever. Dear Father, but thank you this morning, dear Lord. Hallelujah. That you are a God that, that saves and you are a God that heals and you are a God that delivers. And I pray right now, dear Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, that deliverance will come and victory will come. Everyone that might be struggling today, we are not proud of these things, dear Father. Sometimes there are secret sins that we are mining and, and, uh, and uh, we are not proud of. We don't want nobody to know. We don't want it to be discovered because we will be ashamed. Because we know it's, it's wrong, but we still struggle with it. it, it it's hard as it is to, to get out of that, dear Father. But I pray for victory in the name of Jesus. I pray for deliverance. Glory to God. Because you want a clean heart. When we worship him, our worship would be acceptable to God. Vessels that you can use for your honor and for your glory. Father, thank you, dear Lord, for deliverance. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. We have some requests coming in. And so I'm going to uh, ask you to join with me. Sister Shirley wants prayer for her family and also... Uh, her eyes uh, are giving us some trouble. Father, I don't know if Shirley is here this morning, but dear Lord, I pray, dear God, for Shirley. And dear Father, you have heard her request. And I pray, dear Lord, that you will heal her right now and those eyes of hers. Dear Father, is giving us some trouble. And everyone else might be having some issues with eyes today. Dear Father, I pray, God, for your healing. A blurry vision, dear Lord, and not being able to see clearly, dear Father. Uh, a kind of a, a, a dimness, a darkness, dear Lord, I pray God for healing in the name of Jesus. We lift up Sister Cynthia, dear Father, for favor for her husband tomorrow. And so I believe, dear Lord, that he's going to uh, be having uh, to visit uh, and the hospital to follow up on this situation, dear God. And I pray, dear Father, that you will heal that man in the name of the Lord. And hallelujah, that you would make him whole and well. And you are a miracle working God. And we lift up Sister Gina who's not feeling well today. That's why she missed the service. I, I pray God for healing. Dear Father, I pray for everyone else that missed because they're not well. They wanted to be here, but they're not well. I pray God that you will heal them. In Jesus' name right now, dear Father. Lift up some Gita prayer for CXC exams on Tuesday. I pray that you would be successful on all the others um, that are having exams um, in this week coming ahead, dear Father. Thank you, dear Lord. Um, we also lift up um, uh, one prayer for her uh, husband isn't uh, uh, well. I pray, God, for your healing in the name of Jesus. Um, touch and heal by your spirit and by your power. In Jesus' name, dear Lord God. Thank you, dear Father, for healing, dear Lord, and for deliverance this morning. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. Praise God. We will open up the prayer line, and you can come right now. We will launch you with oil and pray with you, amen. That God will heal every sickness and every infirmity, every disease, in the name of Jesus Christ. May we, uh, we ask the ministers of music to come, and they, and they will help us today. As we pray with you right now. Let's all stand right now. Praise the name of Jesus. Would you come as praise offered to you now in a pistol?
Yeah.